Okay, so today I'm going to tap some 10 base 5 cable, also known as thick nut. So here's my tap. And the first step in reusing one of these taps is that you've got to remove the, the center spike. But basically you've got to get the tap all the way apart. So the center spike on these is a half inch hex head. And you can remove it and that's actually the spike that taps into the, into the cable. After that, there's a screw on top of the tap, which will loosen up the clamp. You've got to kind of break it free from the cable and then it slides off. And then the old piece of cable comes out and there's these little sort of fangs, if I can get the camera to focus, that bite into the outer shield of the cable. and those come out too and you may need to kind of flatten them to get the fangs to widen apart to, to make a good connection into the cable but you can leave those in otherwise and you have to take this all the parts over to your cable and normally you're supposed to tap the cable at uh, segments of 2.5 meters apart, I think, something like that. Don't quote me on it, but most of the 10 base 5 cable, the proper cable, is always marked with uh, these black stripes. So that should be right where your center tap would go. You've got to slide the cover back over the cable. Once you get it over, then you tighten down your clamp screw and this makes the connection into the outer shield so now that's complete you gotta flip it over and you've gotta basically core out a hole in the cable so that the the spike can go in without contacting the outer shield now they make a tool for this. I don't have one. So instead, I've got kind of a little piece I made with a hole in the center to guide the drill. And basically I drill with a drill bit. The drill bit is a 330 seconds drill bit. And I just drill carefully until the drill kind of stops. Eventually it hits the copper in the center of the cable and it sort of hits a, a hard spot and then it won't really go any further without significant force. So you can pull this piece out. If I could get it out. probably hard to see right in the center there there's a hole and it's just down to the copper it's not drilled into the copper and then afterwards you take your spike you put it back in there And you screw it in and that's it your cables tapped 
Afterwards, of course, you'll take your, your transceiver, your MAU, and you'll have to take the uh, you'll have to take the, the screws out so you can insert the tap. It's just two screws. Certain other transceivers may have pegs or something to that effect. It doesn't necessarily have to be on a, a screw, but on these cable trons, there are like 1032 screws or something like that. Then you just take the, the tap, you insert it into the MAU, and you put the screws back in. You can do this whole process without taking the network down. In fact, I just did it on a live network. There's two transceivers on the end of the cable. Well, one of them hooked up into a, a twisted pair transceiver, and the other one hooked into a, an older Cisco router that we're using as a terminal server. So if I did this right, and we should be able to come over here to where the other trans uh, the, the other transceiver is and it seems like uh, it's still pinging I'm only getting I'm only pinging it I'm not getting any pings back is it on uh, that's a good question the MAU is getting something might be dot one dot thirty three or something it is on. Anyway, we can check the IP real quick. Um, I'm not getting anything from any map. Yeah, it does seem to be having trouble now. So now if I didn't completely destroy the network, which I didn't because it was just an AUI cable that needed to be wiggled, I should be able to ping 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. There you go. Five successful pings.